Good evening all, and welcome. As many of you know, not everything in this world can be explained away. There are some things that happen that defy all logic and reasoning. I hope you're ready, because it's time to take a trip to the realm of the paranormal and let the darkness take control. You can choose to believe me or not. I know what I heard, and no one can take away my truth. We did some moving around when I was in middle school. After a few places didn't work out, we ended up in an average sized three bedroom in Southern California. I had problems from day one. After spending all day helping my parents move in the last of our things, I nestled into my room, full of boxes, and watched The Empire Strikes Back, since there was no cable and I was having trouble sleeping. My TV was next to the open door, and just as I began to doze off, I saw a bottle tossed into the room at hip level from the pitch black hallway. I heard footsteps leading towards the living room which was opposite of the rest of the bedrooms. After calling out to my mother, father, and sister for a bit, I turned on the lights and found no one in the living room or kitchen. After waking up my parents, who I assumed were being mean to me, they told me that they'd been dead asleep and neither of them could fake the snoring. My sister, who was also dead asleep, barely remembers being woken up that night. I showed my mum the bottle, and she wrote it off as being mine and falling from a box. The thing is, this was a Gatorade bottle, filled with water, and it had what I call Indito Spanish scribbled in it. The day after, we began to put away the yard tools and make use of the shed. The backyard shed was full of all sorts of different bottles of all shapes and sizes, filled to the brim with water and covered in scribbles. It looked like someone had lived there at some point. My sister had a reoccurring incident that would make my hair stand up just by recalling it. After we went through the trouble of dumping all of the water bottles and unpacking within the first week, my sister brought something to my attention. She shared a wall with the garage, and one night at 4am, she made me wake up to something that as an adult, I still can't write off. She shook me awake and took me into a room and asked me to be very quiet. In the Mexican community, it is very common for many to gather a week before a funeral after someone has died to take part in a Catholic prayer. Among other prayers during the night of this tradition, they say a rosary worth of Hail Marys. And through the vent of my sister's room, you could hear what sounded like several older women chanting Hail Mary in unison in hushed tones. We did not share a building with anyone else. It was a three bedroom house. And after a few minutes of listening and not being able to move, I took my sister to my parents' room and asked my mum and dad to come and listen. When they knelt down to listen, my sister said in an average speaking voice, Listen mum, they're in the garage. And I swear to this day, my mum and dad heard a chorus of shh coming from the vent. My dad was of course enraged, and being that I was maybe 14 at the time, it was up to us to brave the garage and see who was there. My dad flung open the garage door and found no one. Like I said, I don't need validation from lying to you. I know what I saw and that's enough for me. We were staying at my boyfriend's parents' house for a few months while they were overseas and we were saving on rent money. It was once a big, beautiful house, but his parents didn't have the time or money to keep it up. The house was up a long 
hilly driveway, surrounded by trees, and the forest had been encroaching on the house for years. The roof needed to be replaced. The pipes needed to be replaced. It was such a shame that this beautiful home was so neglected. We had been talking about scraping up the cash to buy it off them and do it up ourselves until the incident. We had got a black lab puppy right before we moved in. Unlike most black lab puppies, he was an absolute bundle of energy. Unless he was out cold, he would vibrate at all times and was constantly running around and tripping up your feet. Typical puppy stuff. One night, I was walking upstairs to our bedroom and the dog was running up and down the stairs as I walked. I had this weird feeling pass over me just as I was walking, despite not trying to trip over the damn dog. I got to the top and turned around. He had come to a dead stop at the bottom of the stair and was staring up, not at me, at the very middle of the stairs. This dog, that had not stopped jumping since the moment he was born, had come to a complete standstill and was just staring at something that wasn't there. I got really freaked out. I was calling him and slapping my thighs, trying to get him to snap out of it. But it was like he was in a trance. I finally ran down the stairs and picked him up. It wasn't until I took a step back up the stairs that he moved. He started trembling and let out the most pitiful, soul-crushing whine. I sprinted back up the stairs and set him down. He took off as fast as he could and hid under our bed. Now being the huge skeptic that I am, I ignored the feeling in my gut that something was off and went to bed muttering to my boyfriend about how stupid the dog was. We both woke up that night at around 2am to a loud sound. I sat up groggily and asked my boyfriend what had happened. He didn't know, but he thought that a tree branch must have fallen on the house. He opened the windows to look out. That's funny, he said. What? There's no wind. There are no clouds either. It's a really clear night. We pondered that for a moment. I didn't say anything to my boyfriend, but the feeling of unease that I had ignored earlier was rising in my stomach. Holy shit, he whispered. I stared in disbelief. There was a bluish light flashing outside the house. My first instinct was that it was someone coming to rob us. After four or five flashes, the light disappeared. I asked him in a low whisper if he thought it was a flashlight. He said he didn't think so. It was too bright and such a weird colour of light. At that moment, the light flashed again, brighter and bluer. It illuminated our whole room for about a second. It stopped and we were again in total darkness. Neither of us spoke. The dog started to whine under the bed. I hadn't even noticed he'd gone back under there. And it was the same sad, low whine as before. My boyfriend got down on his knees and began pulling the dog out. That's when we heard the most terrifying noise I will ever hear in my life. The room down the hall from us had previously been his dad's office. They had taken their computer when they left, so all that remained was a bookshelf, a few boxes, and an old printer. There was not a new printer with wireless or Bluetooth capabilities. It was the typical cheap home printer that every family seemed to have in the early 2000s. As my boyfriend was pulling the dog from underneath the bed, we heard the telltale sounds of the printer kicking to life. We both 
leapt up and ran into the office. The printer was warming up. We heard it pull a sheet. My boyfriend turned on the light, and sure enough, the printer was sat where it had been left. Only the plug had been awkwardly extended across the room and was plugged into the socket closest to us. He reached over and ripped it out. The printer died. Without a single word, we grabbed the still trembling dog and ran downstairs and got into the truck. We showed up at my boyfriend's friend's house a few minutes later and told him we needed to spend the night. When he gave us a look, my boyfriend told him that this was a no questions asked request. He shrugged, got us some blankets and went back to sleep. We have never discussed this with anyone else and we only discussed it with each other a couple of times in the day afterwards. There was so much we couldn't rationally explain that we just dropped it. We went back to the house the next day and grabbed our things. I told my parents that the plumbing had finally given out and we went to stay with my parents while we looked for something else. We never spent another night in that house. When I was eight, my whole family gathered at my aunt's house for Christmas. Everyone was there. Being a Hispanic family, there was a number of us in the house. All the lights were on in every single room and music was playing on both floors. The kitchen was a buzz with all the ruckus of cooking going on. Anyway, a few hours into it, at around one in the morning, the power goes out. Everything is dark and quiet. Some deliberation later, myself and my uncle volunteer to get to the cellar where the fuse box is. We walk to the back of the kitchen, through the door and down a flight of stairs into the cellar. This place is pitch black. There was a small window on the far side of the exterior part of the floor, yet no light came in, since it was just as dark outside. I place my hand on his right shoulder as he leads me through the room, trying to blindly make ourselves to a metal box against the wall. As we slowly make our way through the thick darkness, we hear something move up ahead. We assumed it to be rats or mice and moved on. We take another five steps, when my uncle breaks the silence, asking if I had just slapped him. I hadn't. We were alone down there, and if I were to have slapped him, it would have been heard in the quiet, which added to the confusion. He complained about feeling like he'd just been slapped on his back. Weird. We move on. Two minutes later, we find the box. He returns the power to the upper floors and the party continues as if it never happened in the first place. After a while, my uncle started complaining about some no weird sensation on his back. No he described it as if it were static prickling him, almost like pins and needles. His wife asks him to lift up his shirt to inspect. And that's when we first notice the large handprint on his back, a clear red mark placed right on his left shoulder blade and going past his spinal cord. Upon some reflection and superstitious paranoia that comes with the Mexican culture, it was decided among my family that the handprint coupled with the noise we heard downstairs was an actual demon. We never found a logical explanation for the mark on his back. We were alone down there, and we would have been able to hear and feel some sort of impact against my uncle, since I was directly behind him, with my hand placed on his shoulder. I tried to find a logical explanation for everything, but this one was just plain weird and unnerving, that something was able to get between the two of us 
without either of us noticing. The fact that it was pitch black, and that we were admittedly completely exposed, doesn't help. The first was from ages eight to nine. Living in SoCal, at this condo, with my mother and stepdad. My bed is in one corner of the room, going along the length of it, and the door is on the opposite corner. I wake up in the middle of the night to see a figure leaning against the wall, staring at me by the door. This figure has an evil smile to it, and the closest thing, although silly, that comes to describing how it looks, is Darth Maul, but in a black suit. This thing is smiling at me. Being a little kid, I'm freaked, and the only thing I could think to do was to close my eyes, in the hopes that it would go away. So I do this for a handful of minutes and open my eyes. Still there, smiling an evil smile. I immediately closed my eyes, terrified. And somehow, after a long time, and perhaps exhausted from the emotions, fall back asleep. I am not a lucid dreamer, and this has never happened again to me. In all fairness, at that point in my life, I was starting to watch adult-grade horror movies. In my defense, Michael Myers was the person I was most scared of, and anything resembling Darth Maul didn't pop up until years later, when the Star Wars movies came out. Technically, there was no reference for me to have at that particular face, subconsciously swimming around in my head. Number 2. Age 15 to 16. Still living in SoCal with my mum in an apartment complex. Normally after my mum went to sleep, I would sneak downstairs and watch TV. Growing up, my mum always had me check the front door before going to sleep. And I remember that while I was drifting off while laying on the couch, I had this nagging feeling to check the door. I was being partially stubborn that night and was determined to check the door once I actually went to bed, for good, in my own room. So I'm half asleep, and I'm getting this compelling urge to check the door, waking me up. I remember being angry with myself while dragging myself off the couch to check the door. It was unlocked. I turned the deadbolt to lock it, and lay back down on the couch just relieved that I could finally lay down in peace. Within minutes, I hear the doorknob slightly and subtly jiggling, as if someone were outside checking the doors to see if any were unlocked. I was petrified in fear, and by the time I get the nerve to check through the peephole, there's no one there. I still actually have this feeling from time to time. Third and final story. I was now in my mid-twenties, bartending in Vegas, and I'm living in a really nice apartment in this brand new complex. So I must have been like one of the first 25 people there. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary, as I was very used to living in apartments. But I did notice I had a string of bad dreams whenever I slept in the bedroom since I was an established night owl from work. Sometimes I would sleep on the couch with the TV on, then I wouldn't get those dreams. It became such a pattern that within a month, I officially made my couch in the living room my new bed. A few months later, I get a little terrier to keep me company. While the little guy didn't growl or bark into corners, I noticed fairly quickly that if I put the bowl in particular places of the apartment, he flat out wouldn't touch it. The sweet spot ended up being between the laundry room and the bedroom. I'm older at this point, and rationalize that as long as something is not actively trying to give me a heart attack, 
I can live with the little oddities. After all, the apartment was the nicest setup I've ever had up until that point. I know it's cliche, but things really did pick up after about 3 a.m. The most common thing to happen was the feeling like something was milling around the kitchen behind me. I would hear little noises, most commonly the sound of someone's ankle popping while trying to sneak around. The only way I could sleep was by having the TV at a certain volume so that I couldn't hear it. The craziest thing to happen was one night, right around that magical 3 a.m. mark, my cable, for whatever reason, goes out. I made a snarky remark to the ghost that they could honestly do better, and I shit you not. Right after I said that, the whole power went out of my apartment. The gym complex was open 24-7, so as soon as that happened, I hauled us out of there and got onto the treadmill until I could see lights go back on in the apartment. I could see my apartment windows from the gym. Now, maybe the place was new and the electrical wiring was bad, causing me to experience this. But it's weird that it was so consistent in the time it happened for two years. I've lived in several places since then and never had anything like that happen to me. I believe that my family has a shadow person living in their home, and this is the story that leads me to believe that. I was 13 at the time, and never been a big believer of things that I could not see physically, but I've always been willing to accept changes in my belief. My family lives out in the country in an old house. That was one of the first built in this area, back when the only way to get there was by taking dirt roads, which in itself is eerie, considering the house is the equivalent of a mansion. I remember always getting an uneasy feeling being in that house, and will also say that everyone who has ever visited the house has had an encounter with this spirit. From being choked to scratches in threes, to inanimate objects being thrown, shaken so violently that they shake the whole house, to just being leered at eerily. This spirit has been in the house longer than I have, but I digress. One night when I was 13, we turned off all the lights in the house and I went to bed. For those of you who don't know, it is extremely dark in the country at night. This night was no exception. I went to bed around nine o'clock and abruptly woke up due to an unsettling feeling and looked around uncomfortably until I realized what was causing the feeling. At the foot of my bed, standing almost as tall as my ceiling, I noticed a massive shadowy figure staring at me. His form was somehow darker than normal darkness, and that alone unnerved me. But the one thing I will never forget is his eyes. Somehow his eyes managed to be darker than the rest of his figure, and I paused and held my eyes open for a good 20 seconds, looking at it, trying to form any manner of speech, because immediately I wanted to pray this figure away but my voice wouldn't come to me. After that long pause of fear, I blinked and it was gone. I still couldn't find my voice and could very much still feel it there, watching me. I rolled over, too scared to leave the comfort of my bed, ready to accept whatever might come and drifted back to sleep. I know that this figure still lives in that house and for anyone who doesn't know, regularly burning sage helps keep them at bay. But he still comes back any time my family forgets to burn the sage. And I refuse to stay in the guest house because he is taken to staying out there. Everyone who stays at my family's house sees this entity. And we have even had paranormal investigators 
come to our home and look at it for us. My family still lives in this house, and it is still very haunted, and gives you odd feelings and sensations depending on where you go. I'm happy to say I don't live there anymore, and if nothing else, the sage rituals make the tension inside the house go down, but I know that he just waits in the guest house for the next time they forget to do the sage rituals. Seven years ago, I lived in a two-story farmhouse. It was built in 1908 and was both large and old. I was packing clothes and putting them in a small unused bedroom. I was wearing my MP3 player and the last time I checked, it showed three-fourths battery life. I was on my fourth or so trip and was hauling a load of shirts on hangers. It occurred to me, the closet was empty too. Perfect. I'll just hang them back in there. This closet was almost a second room. It had a short, glossy wooden door. The area was thrice as long as wide, with hardwood floors. The lacquer still smelled, even though I'm sure it was fresh a hundred years ago. I ducked fully inside and thought, this is a weird little place to be. Suddenly, the music doubled in volume and changed to something that wasn't music. It was like, I don't even know, rapid nonsense, fast electronic babbling. It scared the hell out of me. I flew straight out, looked at my player, and it was dead. I'm a pretty rational guy. That MP3 player could sometimes show more battery life than it actually had. It'd done that before, and maybe the sounds were some sort of malfunction before shutting down. I didn't really believe in ghosts, but I'm telling you, it shocked and frightened me to the core. My skin felt electric for hours after, and I've never felt comfortable in that room again. I was moving back to this city, and was going to stay at my parents' house until I was able to find me a place to stay and such. They thought it was a good idea, because I could help watch my sister, who is schizophrenic, and help out in that regard. I was helping out, and renovating some of the rooms, pulling out the carpets, fixing up the hardwood, doing sheetrock, so on and so forth. I had just gotten finished with hanging the sheetrock in the room, and I would be staying in and was in the kitchen getting some water. The house was a long hallway, and at the very end is a closet with two rooms on the right and left. The room I was working in was on the left, and the room on my right my mum used for storage. I mean, packed with extra clothing, house supplies, and whatnot. It was a tight fit to move around in. Anyway, from the kitchen in the hallway, I see someone move from the storage room into my room. They shut the door. No biggie. I knew my parents weren't there, but my sister was possibly there, and it was only her. I make my way to the bedroom door, and use the handle and notice it's locked. I knock, and ask my sister to open the door, because there were no curtains or blinds on the windows, and it was a hot summer's day, and I could see a shadow moving around underneath the door. I knocked, and asked my sister to open the door and stop messing around. I had to start mudding the sheetrock, and then the shadow stopped and looked as though it were facing the door. I told her I was going to call our parents. I know, real mature of me, if she didn't open the door. So I called them and carried the phone to the end of the hallway, and asked if they didn't mind getting her out of the room. They informed me she was with them. Every hair on my body stood up, 
and I moved as quickly as I could to get the hell out of that house. As soon as I got to the front door, the door handle was moving, and someone was coming in, and I was about to shit a brick. Fortunately, it was my brother. He asked me what was wrong, and I told him that someone is in the bedroom I was working on. He, having no idea what the hell happened, walked into the room and opened it. It was ice cold in there, the window had fogged up, and for some reason, this freaked him out and made him want to get out as well. I don't think I've ever been afraid like that before. Not sure I have since either, except when I think about it. When I was around 13, my family moved to a three-story house in Ohio, a colonial type situated a block away from the rail yard of a large and reasonably busy steel mill. A pretty old house, some 80 years or so at the time, if I remember correctly. I remember the first time I saw it, after it had been bought, and we did a little tour of the inside, and I noticed with some distress that almost every single interior door, bedrooms, bathrooms, attic, heck, even the hall closet, had deadbolts on them, on both sides of the door. The couple of doors that did not have them had scarred areas on the jams where deadbolts obviously had been mounted at some time in the past. This didn't make any sense to us at all, although we more or less just brushed it off. But it never stopped nagging me. As part of our general house fixing up work, we removed all of the deadbolts, but even doing that just made me more uncomfortable rather than less. Removing the locks, without knowing why they had been put up in the first place. But my father told me to just stop worrying about it. A month or so after we had settled in, I was in my room, the third floor attic, during a storm. It wasn't night time yet, but it was heading in that direction. The attic wasn't creepy at all. I'd actually requested it for my room. It was quasi-finished. The wood roof beams and insulation being covered with slanted walls made out of painted pegboard. Its floor plan was as big as the whole house, even if the very edges where the roof met the floor weren't usable spaces. And I thought it was great. Anyway, I was laying in bed, my headboard just under the twin windows that faced the front of the house. It was extremely windy outside, and the house was talking and groaning with the wind, as old houses will. And I was pretty much just dozing off. Suddenly, from just above and behind my headboard, there was a huge crashing sound. Bang. Kabang. Right against the wall. I actually fancied I felt the vibration through the bed. It sounded like something huge and heavy. Like a sledgehammer had just knocked violently on the outside wall next to my window. My third floor windows. It startled the hell out of me. And I turned around and tried to look out the window, to see if I could find any clue as to what had caused the sound. But I could find none. And while the house continued to creak and sway in the wind, there were no other loud knocks that night. After some time, I fell back to sleep, half wondering if I dreamt the whole thing. And I pretty much ended up forgetting about it as time went by. Many months, not quite a year later, it happened again. Another fresh and breezy thunderstorm this time at night, and I was leaning in my bed up against the headboard end, watching the storm outside. Lots of lightning. I loved storms in general, and still do. The rain was coming down in sheets, and the wind was gusty, and slinging it against the window. 
so my view was somewhat distorted by the constantly running water. Something caught my attention some distance away. Just beyond the steel mill rail yard were a set of gigantic yellow movable gantries used, I believed, to lift stacks of metal sheets or rods or plates or whatever onto flatbed trailers for trucks to come and haul away. I could see these silhouetted in the distance when the lightning flashed, and for a few moments, I seemed to see what looked like some large thing moving around on top of one of the gantries. It was impossible to tell through the wavering river of water that was constantly pouring down the storm window. But I looked intently, trying to figure out what I was seeing. Suddenly again, there was a gust of wind and a crackling sound, and the storm windows, the aluminium frame, windows, screen, the whole kit, was yanked off the front of the house, inches away from my face tumbling down and crashing onto the porch roof below. It took me a second or two to register what had just happened, and then I got right up against the window itself, my nose and forehead pressed against the glass, trying to see down to where the storm window had landed. While I was there, that's when it struck again, a terrific sharp blam right there where my face was. I could feel the glass tremble, with the bang against my face. And even the window frame, where my hands were braced, shook with force. Something invisible, smashing against the front wall and windows of my bedroom. I jumped back in a panic off my bed, scrambled down the steps into the second floor hallway, shut my door, and just stood there like an idiot, not knowing what to do. I thought about the deadbolt that had been on the inside and outside of every freaking door in the house when we moved in, and wondered if whatever had just attacked me was the reason those had been put in. That's what it felt like to me at the time, an attack of some sort. I paced quietly. I was pretty much a wreck. But my instinct to not start yelling and wake up my parents, so that I couldn't get told off, was great enough to keep me collected at least. I don't know how long it took me to settle down, but after no further loud noises and the storm abating, I went back to my room and pulled my bed in the opposite direction, as far away from that end as those windows as practically possible. The next day after school, I spent a lot of time rearranging my room. I didn't put anything near those damned windows. I didn't want to have to go near them again. And maybe it worked. I never heard any knocking against that wall after that night. Maybe whatever it was had gone. Maybe moving my bed away from the wall appeased it. I don't know. I didn't care. I was happy. In time, as the years passed, I put the incidents out of my mind. Now, if I want to be completely honest, many years later, purely by happenstance, I managed to find a rational explanation for the banging sounds. However, I never found any kind of rational explanation for those deadbolts on the doors. What prompted whoever it was to install them? or why he or she felt they were needed on every single door, on both sides of every single door in the house. I think about it once in a while to this day, and it never fails to give me the creeps. I found out just a couple of years ago, in fact, when I was helping fix up the place so my father could sell it. I was taking down the pegboard in the attic, so we could put some new insulation up and under it. And when I moved the piece under the window, these two and very heavy corroded looking brass rods fell onto the floor. They were the old window sash counterweights, the cloth ropes attaching them, 
had dry rotted through, and the wind shaking the house finally jarred them loose. The bangs were these things falling and hitting the floor behind the pegboard, one at a time. One night when I was in middle school, I was the only one awake in my house. It was 2am, and I was in the basement, on the computer. All the TVs were off, and I had no music or anything playing, so it was dead quiet. All of a sudden, I hear a woman's voice at the top of my stairs of my bedroom saying, Hello? I thought it was my mum, even though it sounded nothing like her. So I reply, Hello? And hear nothing. So, I went upstairs, and turned the corner to my stairs to see no one, and everyone was still asleep. On another occasion, I was visiting my mum's side of the family down in Virginia, because my aunt's mother was incredibly sick, and about to die. So as awful as this sounds, we basically went down and waited until she passed. It was about 3am and my cousins and I were playing old video games when her parents came down and told us the news that her grandmother had passed. So we went up to bed and talked for a little bit, then finally turned off the lights and went to sleep. But all of a sudden, I felt as if someone was in the room with us. Out of nowhere, I sat up in bed to see a black shadow standing in the corner of the room waving at me. I stared at it for a good ten minutes until I woke up my cousin, telling her that her grandmother was with us. I don't know how I knew it was her, but it was just this feeling. She told me she felt nothing. It still, to this day, freaks me out when I think about it. We are renting a house right now that tends to be a bit spooky here and there. One night, my girlfriend and I went to bed as usual. We have the master bedroom, and it has a bathroom attached to it. The door to the bathroom only has the ability to lock if you press this little button behind the handle from the inside. So I close the bathroom door, like every night, and so I know it wasn't locked when I closed it. We went to sleep, and I ended up having a pretty sketchy dream. The dream started in my childhood home, and I was in my sister's room, and was looking out the doorway into the hallway, and saw a bright light with a shadow figure clearly around the corner, standing in front of the light. I didn't hesitate, and ran to the hall to fight whatever it was. As I turned to face the figure, I swung uh, what I would consider an extraterrestrial, which was all black, and the face was terrifying. The alien was also giving off some kind of black smoke, gas-like substance off its body. As soon as my hand hit its body, I went right through it, and time slowed down, and my arm completely slowed down, and I realised I couldn't even touch this being, so I noped out and woke up. I went back to sleep, and when I woke up for work, I went to go into the bathroom to take a shower, and the bathroom door was locked. There was no lock on the outside, so I couldn't get in. During the commotion, I woke up my girlfriend and asked her if she had locked the door. She said no, and then mentioned that she had a scary dream. I said that it was weird as I had had one too. She started off by saying, I was in my childhood house. My jaw drops instantly. She says that she was there for someone's birthday, but after looking around the house, no one was there. So she decided to leave the house, and as soon as she got to the front door, she was locked in. And something was coming up from behind her. She struggled with the door and could not get it to open and started to panic because whatever was behind her was coming really quick. Before it could get to her, she woke up, because she could not bear to turn around and see what it could have been. 
We never figured out how the door locked itself. And just to add to the weirdness, the bathroom is on a motion sensor and it will turn on in the middle of the night for no reason. I turned down the sensitivity, but it still turns on here and there, which could be technological flaws, but strange regardless. Hey guys, it's Mort here, and thank you so much for listening. I hope you all don't mind my voice. It's a bit croaky because I've still got this blasted sore throat. But I suppose you'll have to make do. Let me know what you thought of the video in the comments section. That's always a huge help. And why not drop a like just for good measure? Don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell icon to be up to date every time I post a new story every night. Also, I don't shout this out often, but why not follow me on Twitter and Instagram too? That can be pretty fun. If there's a story that you would like to share, feel free to send it to my Reddit or post it to my email. Either are fine. Just be sure to include plenty of paragraphing, punctuation and description to maximise the chances of your story being selected. But anyway, for now guys I'm going to sign off and probably make myself a warm drink, as I'm sure lots of you would have told me by this point already. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.